pick six. Malik neighbors here starting us off here. Um, you know, our, 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 our first pick and, you know, one that was kind of a, a shock for some people because some people thought quarterback. So let's give you guys a little taste of what Malik neighbors can do. There's there's that oh, big old hug. Part of that arena ball. I mean, oh, that's not part of the highlights. So. <laughs> What'd you say? He played quarterback as well? Uh, that's it. My idea is quarterback threw me the ball. Oh, yeah. That's not part of the highlights. Oopsie. Yeah, so Deb's already kind of beat us to the punch, as she often does here. She, she's quick, and she's definitely in with everything going on with the Giants here. But while that's we're going knows. over these players, guys, I want to hear what your thoughts are. So I want to hear what everybody else thinks, because we want to know – are we crazy for how we think of these picks? We want to know, do, are we, you know, um, are we maybe off base on what some other people are thinking here? So, you know, let us know what you guys think as well here, pick by pick as we keep going through here. If you're in the Twitter world, because a lot of you guys are in the Twitter world here. The X, uh, the X yeah, 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 a lot of X here. We got a little degeneration X here going on here. Yeah, so, X go to listen, give it to you. appreciate you guys listening, but if you're in there, we can't see questions, unfortunately. Uh, but if you pop onto YouTube, that's the best way for us to see that kind of stuff. You just search two giant goofballs, we'll come right up. Um, but like I said, I want I want to be you guys are also in, you know interactive with this whole thing here. So um all right. Anyway, Malik neighbors, we've we have we have run down the stats here for him several times here. So I'm just gonna give you last year's stats for him real quick. 13 games, 89 receptions, 1569 yards, 14 touchdowns, and uh, one rush for one yard, too. Can't forget that one rush for that one yard. Now, here was our notes we had pre-draft on him. So I, I don't want to make it seem like we're changing our opinions on guys. Like, oh, the Giants drafted them. They're spectacular now. When we said they cra were crap beforehand. So, you know, we're going to give you guys that as well if we, if we did. Which, to be honest, half the guys that they drafted, we didn't even have in our top positions here. Yeah, I was going to say, once we got to uh, halfway through day two, we went... Well, we definitely disagree with some with some places with the Giants there, to be very frank with you guys here. Yeah. So and that's not necessarily listen, listen, we're not saying Shane's horrible. We're not the, we're not going that negative here. But difference yet, of opinion. Least. Keep in mind that Joe Shane has access to stuff that we don't have access to. Medical interviews, all kinds of stuff that you know, they're like talking to like the his, you know, babysitter from fifth grade. I mean, we, we don't have access to that kind of shit. But let's get into with neighbors, what we said. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm spitballing <laughs> here. Pros and cons here. Um, pros, we had great burst upon catch, great at tracking deep ball and good route runner. Cons, we just had size and strength, but also led to a little bit of trouble with the press coverage there. Let's be very frank and not cut hairs here. This guy has the potential to be the not only the best wide receiver since OBJ, but if he stays here long term, the best guys, he's 20 years old in Giants history. He very well could end up being that kind of pick. Again, I'm not saying he's going to be, but if he's good as advertised and he stays here long term, he will blow away the, with the numbers here. Because again, the Giants, while we've had some great receivers over the years, you know, I'm not trying to say we haven't any. OBJ was here too short term to be like, oh my God, top oh, dog geez. here you know in the giants uh yeah. wide receiver um uh, you know amani tumor holds a lot of the the records for, for uh, guys that's a lot of that based on longevity he was just a good solid player who was here for a decade plus um you know you got obviously plexico burris was here for a little while there you know you got some good players there but there wasn't this guy that's like in that Mount Rushmore of giants players so malik neighbors has a chance to really set himself up here 
um, with that. And the big thing is his athleticism. The guy's extremely athletic. The guy is, it, it just, just does things that most people point blank cannot do. And I don't mean most people like me and Rob here, who obviously, you know, we're sitting down talking about football instead of playing it for a reason. Um, I was a good tinder. Come on, Drew. Yeah. Let's... I, I was left bench. Yeah. But I was a good tinder. With this guy. Contender. He was also a contender. <laughs> but, Sorry. you know, the big, the big thing is, is that he does things that football players, receivers, just point blank cannot do. Cannot do. You know, if you watch the the the, the, you know, the the clips we just showed you guys there, there was one move specifically where he just like seemed to like make one step and get a five yard, you know, separation there. Now, is that going to happen in the NFL? Probably not. He's facing better competition. But if that five yard stretch becomes a three yard stretch, you're still wide the hell open in NFL terms, guys. I was going to say, yeah. I mean, he be when he's in college, but my God, if he does half what he did in college, he's going to be a great, great yeah. receiver for the Giants. And like yeah. you said, if he stays with the Giants long term, there's a very possibility that he might be one of the best of the best. The best of the sir. best of the best, sir. Yeah. But, you know, and we got to we got to we got to address the elephant in the room with this too because let's be honest I think most people know who Bleak Neighbors is so I don't want to go too much into the you know profile we already did that I mean oh, excuse me there I got allergies all of a sudden here I'm like allergic you're to allergic the, you're allergic to allergic to negativity because we're about to talk about some negativity here I'm allergic <laughs> to negativity and that's the fans that keep saying well, who's gonna throw him the ball. And listen, I don't dispute that we need a quarterback. I do not dispute we need a quarterback. Let me let me be very, very cut and dry and clear on that, folks. When we picked, the top three quarterbacks were gone. All the reports are the Giants went crazy trying to trade up at that point with the Patriots, uh, offer next next year's first round pick, second round pick, all this stuff. They offered enough to make it worthwhile if the Patriots wanted to do it. In my opinion. And a lot of the what I'm hearing from people who have inside knowledge, the Patriots weren't going to trade no matter what. Guys, I told you this yeah. in, the, in the in in our latest mock draft. If they would trade that pick, they would have been absolute morons. They don't have a quarterback. They have no future whatsoever on that roster. They needed one, so we had left J.J. McCarthy, who, no offense to J.J., but Giants brass was obviously not impressed. Who That's else all is down that? To. Yeah, way later. I mean, granted, this is probably the fastest that quarterbacks went. Well, well hold on, we're gonna get to, we'll, we'll get to that. We'll get to that in a second here because we're gonna go we're gonna go big on a bit by bit here. So the, the JJ McCarthy, the Giants obviously weren't interested. That's what it boils down to. They spent a ton of time with him. He even said that he spent more time with the Giants than he did with anybody else. They just didn't like him. They didn't think he was that good. We tend to agree with him on that. He's not that good. And I'm telling you right now, yeah. watch what happens in Minnesota, guys. He's got Justin Jefferson, Jordan Addison. He's got uh, TJ Hawkinson. You know, he's got he's a got good a lot offensive of line Atlantic there. Players to throw to. I'm telling you right now that if he doesn't look great with them, I'll be shocked. And if he does look great, it's not as much a thing on him as it is the talent around him. I was going to say, if he looks mediocre, yeah, going to that team with that amount of talent, just know we all would have been disappointed and upset because there's way more talent around him yeah. currently that we know that's proven to be around him. Compared to what we I'm got just, out, because I mean, we got, I mean, we got neighbors who, I mean, obviously could be way better than uh, Jefferson. Whoa, he could be has, way better than Jefferson. Ha, he has the potential. He has the potential. Oh, I don't know. What are you drinking tonight, by the way, Rob? You're comparing oh, him to, the, one, to like one of the top three or four 
you know, receivers in the in the entire NFL, if not top, depending who you, you know. You, you can't put elite neighbors in a league category before he even plays it down. Okay, do we not all just put the top Malik neighbors? And do we not put you know Roman Doomsday? Do we not put Harrison Jr. in elite categories being drafted? And you're getting mad at me They're for elite saying that prospects. They're elite prospects. You can't sit there and okay. say that a guy who's literally the like potentially the best. Okay, so in I'm NFL saying it's not as good as him. Yes, that's I didn't I didn't say that. That's you taking out of context. I said if you go to a team like the Vikings and you have JJ, you have Hogson, and you have talent to throw to, granted, we did draft talent that has the prospect to be better. And he's mediocre over with the Vikings, just know he's going to be worse with the Giants. Okay. Oh, so you're talking about the J- you're saying that JJ McCarthy, to be clear, is not as I'm good saying a JJ- as Malik Neighbors. Is that what you're saying? Because the JJ no, no. music is you have JJ McCarthy, the quarterback. I'm saying JJ, JJ McCarthy, Justin Jefferson, the receiver. I'm saying JJ McCarthy. If he goes to, well, he obviously went to Minnesota. And he's got JJ, just Jefferson. He's he's got all the talent around him, and he looks average. And JJ is top receiver, and we picked up a, an elite aspect that could be better, could be not necessarily saying better. And he looks meter, and JJ McCarthy looks average. He looks like Kirk Cousins two point just know we dodged a bullet. <laughs> oh, we definitely dodged a bullet, I, I think, potentially. I mean, but so we didn't like him. Michael, Michael Penix was there. Uh, I don't disagree with them not taking him if they didn't like him either. Same as, and you guys know how much I like Penix, guys. I think Penix we, is in a shitty situation, and I feel bad for him because <sighs> he needs to break out the Shawshank Redemption over here at this point. Like, he needs to get the hell out of that prison right through the poop tunnel. And but obviously the Giants didn't like him enough. Bo Nix ends up going 12th overall. And that, uh, we, we called it that night. We, I think I think my exact words were, it's the, it's the biggest reach since Stretch Armstrong. Or we, so we, we could, Inspector Gadget, I think we made a reference yeah, to as well. Like, yeah. we, I mean, and it's just that, like, that, that, that. you can't blame the Giants for not taking a quarterback at six. Because the guy wasn't there. The worst move you can ever make is reaching. So if you don't think somebody's worth six there, don't do it. And I want a quarterback, guys. I want a quarterback. But do you know who's the team that keeps taking quarterbacks that suck over and over again? The goddamn Jets. We are better than the Jets. We are not the Jets, guys. You don't chase a quarterback. You get a quarterback. When the right one becomes available, or you, you don't have to keep drafting in the top man. five. You don't have to keep trading for the senior citizens of the Green Bay Packers. You go ahead and you wait for the right position, the right move at that point. There's other options, guys. Now, real quick, I think we kind of go on a tirade about the, the, the quarterbacks here. A spoiler alert we didn't get a quarterback at all this draft. Spencer Rattler. I was hearing from a lot of people here. I know it's weird because I didn't say it until day two, day three, or at that point when he was sitting there. Did not do very good in the interview process, and a lot of people did not like him. He did not impress. Again, if the Giants are impressed and don't like someone, why would you draft him? Correct. And for all the knocks we have on Daniel Jones, and they're there and they're legit. I don't care what Daniel Jones lovers say. They're legit knocks. He looks like Bruce Campbell. That's the knock. <laughs> but what I'm getting at <laughs> is for all the knocks problem. on him, if you're not going to draft somebody that you believe is better than Daniel Jones, then why draft him? 100%. Again, I don't necessarily agree with the evaluation, but I don't have all the information that Shane 
Dable, the Giants brass has. And to force them to go ahead and say, you have to go ahead and draft a quarterback. You can't force that. Because even if you don't like him, maybe Drew Locke is somebody that all of a sudden plays better. You know, he did play, keep in mind, last year in Seattle where magical things happen to quarterbacks. Who knows? Sneak to beat. I still think if you're that unsure about the quarterback room, and I know people think I'm crazy for this. I'll, I don't give a damn. I say what I say, and I think what I think. Plenty of crazy shit I say. I still think you make a call to Ryan Tannehill. They still can. We can easily free up the money. I don't think he's even going to be that expensive, to be very frank with you, because he's he knows his career is dwindling down. You get him on a one-year deal, and you hope he can get a quarterback next year. Let's be very frank. No matter what quarterback we had this year, guys, we're not winning a damn Super Bowl. I would love to be Until wrong. Until we do. Uh-oh, we <laughs> lost Rob's, whole, Rob's computer uh, camera there just fell. He's very upset about it. It's like, oh, we're not winning a Super Bowl? Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh. But, I mean, it's the truth, guys. We're not winning a Super Bowl no matter what quarterback we have. The team is not ready. Yeah. So, I don't understand why why they need to force it. I really don't. Again, I would have loved to get a quarterback. I'm not going to force him into one that we don't want. That's insane. That's where you make mistakes. That's where you have issues. And that's where you don't build up a team when you finally get a quarterback. Because you waste all these BS picks on quarterbacks that suck. You know, so you go ahead and you get the best player available, especially when he matches a need. Neighbors fits a need. We need a top dog. We need a big time receiver. We don't have that. And I got to say this, guys, for all the issues we have with the Giants in the last couple of years, very quietly, I feel like right now, you mean super quiet. we have a good receiver room now, guys. Yeah, it's only been 10 years, but hey, let's go. It's only been a couple of years for Shane. I'm, I'm getting seeing this as far as that. Look what he walked into. Look at this shit show he worked, walked into. At the you know the, the the wide receiver position. Now you got Malik Neighbors again hasn't played her down in the NFL. I'm not saying he is a top dog, but he has the ability to be potentially a top dog. Yeah, and we haven't had anybody in a while you can say could potentially be a top dog until we saw Kenny Galladay, you know, you know, actually playing the game in the field. We thought that maybe beforehand, but then we saw him play and go, Oh god, no, he's obviously not, he's not what he was. But you know, you have a, a potential top dog now in Malik Neighbors. You got Wandale Robinson, who has shown you very good flashes at that point. I, I still say it again. I'm not saying no. 100 catches this year. He has that Over. Over. He has that potential. Over 100 catches. You got Jalen Hyatt, who's one, potentially the fastest wide receiver in the entire NFL and was open quite often last year, and a quarterback couldn't see him, couldn't get to him, couldn't figure it out. Not always because of the quarterback's fault, sometimes the offensive line's fault. I will say that to, to, to clarify. You got Darius Which Slayton. Also improved. Yes. You got Darius Slayton, who is a 700 yard guy almost year in, year out. I think one year he didn't hit that. That's it. It is rookie year. Yeah. No, it wasn't even rookie year. It was like his third year or something like that. His rookie year, he had like almost 800 yards, I want to say. That's right. Yeah. I think it was a sophomore year. I can look it up and verify, but I mean, it's, I'm pretty sure it's one year. Do it yeah, all who cares? Yeah. Then you got Isaiah Hodgins, who I'm not saying he's great, but he's a good depth piece. This is a legit wide receiver room, guys, for the first time in a long time. So you know what? We yeah. fixed the problem with this pick. Potentially, assuming it works out. We, That's what I say, potentially. potentially. We fixed the problem. So, again, Curious what you guys think, though. Malik Neighbors. You like the pick, don't like the pick, think we should have taken a quarterback. Am I crazy for going on a rant about quarterbacks? With, uh, <laughs> we took Panix Jr. with the sixth pick overall, like, which is... Listen, I would not have been upset. I really wouldn't have been. If the Giants had that conviction, and they liked no it, way. I would not have been upset. No, it, it was different. Knowing how this draft went. It's a little crazy. You know, you, I, you know that the first, interesting. 12, the first 12 picks... Six quarterbacks go in the first 12 picks. Six quarterbacks ties the record of the most quarterbacks taken in the first round. Like, 
It's a within 12 picks. Uh, Insane. That's what I'm saying. Like, how do you guess that? Like, get, you can't. And you know what? Can't. I wonder. I wonder if, you know, I know he wouldn't tell you now, obviously, if you asked him. But I wonder in years from now if, if Joe Shane got asked, hey, if you knew going into it that all the, 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 the top tier quarterbacks would be gone by pick 12, would you have picked quarterback at six? And if so, what quarterback? Well, back. He'll never tell you that now. Thanks, Junior. I think you know, you know where I'm at that, but yeah. Like I said, obviously they didn't think he was that good. I have to trust their evaluation. They have they have more uh, content, poor content and knowledge than I do at that point because they it's actually so much our work for an NFL team. I I will disagree with saying he's not worth that much. It's in their eyes. Not, I'm not saying mine for the record. Yeah. Now I would realizing think I'm myself and that no problem. We've multiple times, a lot of times, took the quarterback uh, every time in the second round, not the first round. Yeah. We thought a lot of these quarterbacks will fall into the second round. So now that it's over, say, oh, pick six. Definitely go quarterback. No, we said my league neighbors from the get go, and I stand by that. Like I'm yeah, not we... mad by that choice. Like I, I think they did the right move. I think in our mocks, we've drafted each of the big three receivers at different points, if I remember correctly. Yeah, we we did have Marvin Harris Junior. Uh, Junior once because um, you had yeah Marvin Harris Junior. We had last because we thought that JJ McCarthy would go fourth because they'd be the trade. Yes, didn't correct. happen. Happened at ten instead. We're kind of right. Which is nuts. Which is nuts. <laughs> so, but yeah, again, good. this is a good pick, guys. If you hate the pick, then you just, sorry, you just don't understand football. The only only thing you can hate about the, the pick, pers- about the pick, not hate the pick, I should say, about the pick, is I do have a little bit of concerns about Malik Neighbors potentially be, being that diva receiver. Oh, he's going to be the diva receiver. But no, oh, I mean, like diva headache for the team receiver. I, he's there's that's my biggest concern. Yeah, you know, he made the comments about Daniel Jones, and everybody says that we took that out of context, whatever. No, you said it, don't say that kind of stuff because you know what? Now you got to now, now you have an issue. And the second he yeah, got say, now everybody wanted to see what was going to happen about Daniel Jones. The first, pretty much the first question you got at the press conference, have you talked to Daniel Jones yet? What do you think of Daniel Jones? And he dodged the question, by the way, guys. Yeah, dodged it. He was like, Neo. If he dodged it anymore, you'd have thought he got drafted by a baseball team in LA. I'm just saying. <laughs> so that's the only concern I have. As long as he proves to be more focused on the team than himself. This is going to be a fun run, guys. You guys are going to enjoy watching this kid play. I'm telling you, he physically does things that nobody in this draft could do. He is potentially going to be the best wide receiver coming out of this draft. We called that initially when we talked about these wide receivers. He has the highest ceiling. If you're going to tell me somebody's going to become the 1,500-yard receiving yard guy, out of this class, it's him. I have no doubt that Harrison Jr. Oh. will be consistently a thousand to twelve hundred kind of guy. I'm just saying. We're gonna have to see. And we're gonna have to get to get to know him because that's part of the problem we have right now. We don't know him yet. We're gonna have to see what happens. Yeah. The Giants know him. The Giants sat down with him. So I'm gonna trust Joe Shane knows what he's doing. Because he hasn't really brought trouble people in here before. So, which is also not like a Mara family thing to do. No, yeah, it's very much away. not. Very much not. All right. Thanks for listening to Two Giant Goofballs, a New York Giants podcast. We appreciate your support. Thanks so much.